We're getting closer and closer to the Culture Proof Conference 2024, and we could not be more excited. Yes, it's a great time for the whole family, a great time of ministry, mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, grandparents, <laughs> everybody, the kids. We have uh, something for them as well. Of course, we have the Culture Proof Kids, Culture Proof Teens. With, they're going to have some great speakers. It's going to be led by our Maria Hamilton, the third, the third. <laughs> and also Mark and Amy Warren. And so, That's right. man, the kids are going to be equipped and you can have some great discussions and conversation with them as you head back home. We are so excited. This year's conference is hosted by Faith Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. When registration opens, you will be among the first to know. If you go to cultureproof.net, make sure you join our email list because we are going to blast out open registration yes. to that list first. If you are a part of that email list, you will be among the first to register. And um, rumor has it that there's a special treat in involved for those who register early. So stay wow. connected, cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net. We're super excited about our guests who are all joining to talk about one thing, mm. resisting the cultural resisting trends the truth. that yes. rival the truth. Yes. We're going to be talking about the ways that we can remain culture-proof from mm. scientific apologetics, biblical apologetics, cultural apologetics. Yes. How do we live in this world as faithful followers of Christ? We're going to target every age group, so make sure you show up up and bring your entire family. Yes, we're going to have a great lineup of speakers, which you'll be able to view their bios on the website, cultureproof.net. Once you go on, Abraham Hamilton III, Miki Addison. We're going to have Dr. Jason Lau, Dr. Kathy Cook, and others. Dr. Renton Rathbun, Dr. Lee Brand. We are super excited. Dr. Taryn Dames. Mm -hmm. I feel like by next conference, I'm going to also have my doctorate just because <laughs> it kind of flows. Anyway, hey. we're super excited about what the Lord is doing, and we want you to join us. The Culture Proof Conference has happening July 18th through the 20th at Faith Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. Stay connected because more information about that is rolling out just around the corner. You're going to find that at cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net. Make sure you join the email list. We can't wait. Uh -huh. Hello. You're listening to Culture Proof. This is Will. And you're listening to Wednesdays with Will. You know, I'm just glad to be with you. Um, this is something that we did when we had our other radio show airing the Addisons. Every Wednesday, I would take the time to have the show to myself. And I would talk about various issues from the scripture. And uh, since we have transitioned to doing Culture Proof, uh, I haven't been doing the Wednesdays with Will. So I, I figured that... Um, this would be a great opportunity to kind of just share a little bit uh, more of uh, what's on my heart and what's on my mind as we uh, navigate these cultural issues. You know, we are adamant that the straight edge of scripture is where we uh, get all of our answers from. And so today I want to present to you um, the spiritual responsibilities of men, the spiritual responsibilities of men. Um, just a couple of announcements. Just remember that Culture Proof Conference 2024 will be happening July 18th through the 20th in Bartlett, Tennessee at Faith Baptist Church. Uh, that's right outside of Memphis, Tennessee. And so if you're going to fly in, you're flying to the Memphis International Airport. But man, we would love for you to be there. Go to cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net and uh, register, register today. See, this conference is a conference for the total family, for, for the whole family. Uh, we uh, believe in ministering to mother, father, children, grandparents, uncles, aunts. Man, all hands have to be on deck. There's a lot that's going on, and we talk about, them, about it every day uh, on the Culture Proof podcast. But man, we have a responsibility as parents to hold the line. We have a responsibility to be engaged. We have a responsibility uh, to be informed, to understand what's happening, and to apply the straight edge of Scripture to all of these different things that's that's going on. You know, there's a lot of different answers you can you can get from various sources, but there's no source, no source like the Bible. The Word of God tells us exactly how we should navigate every issue that we face. And so uh, on this podcast, that's what you will hear. If you have been a long time listener, 
uh, to ours. You know that that's where we live. We bring these issues out, but we talk about them uh, in light of the scriptures. And so today we're going to talk about the spiritual responsibility of men. The, re the spiritual responsibility of men. Now, we all know that the way that God has set things up, men, we are the leaders of our home. Uh, God had has established an order based upon uh, his wisdom. And we see the enemy constantly trying to um, change and distort what God has set forth. And when we do that, we have devastation. We have chaos. We have destruction. But God has set forth an order. And so we're going to talk about um, and, and just look into what are the spiritual responsibilities of men. Well, spiritually responsible men, first and foremost, are prayerful men. You know, it's amazing. And I remember growing up, uh, you, normally you would see the women leading out in prayer. It's almost like prayer was a, a woman's thing. Not so. As we read the word of God, we see that men are admonished to pray. First Timothy chapter two, verse one uh, through two, then four through eight. First of all, then I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men for kings and all who are in authority so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. For this, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. As a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Therefore, I want men in every place to pray. Therefore, I want men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. And that word right there, <laughs> the Greek word is actually is men, men. So the it's, it's a calling out to men to pray. And a spiritually responsible man has a prayer life. And I know that's not easy all of the time with so much that's going on. So many responsibilities, but we have to make room to commune with the Father and to pray. So spiritually responsible men pray. God has set in order for the man of, uh, to be the spiritual head of his home, a covering for his wife and children, but also to have spiritual authority through prayer for his community and nation. First Timothy chapter two, Paul is addressing Timothy and, and tells him that all manner of prayer should be made for all men. Then there are specific offices named uh, for kings and all who are in authority. Remember, the king is at, at that time was Nero. This was a king that was hostile towards Christians. And so Paul is telling Timothy, you ought to be praying for the leaders, for the king. And you may be thinking now. Man, we have leadership in this country that's hostile towards the word of God. Well, our uh, job as the men of God is to pray, to pray concerning those leaders. This King Nero was persecuting the church. He was persecuting Christians. The man of God is to pray for those in authority, even if they disagree with him or dislike him. See, that can be very tough. When you know people are not doing right, not doing good, the admonishment to us is to pray. You know, I remember the Lord uh, speaking to my heart, saying, if you would pray as much as you complain, there would be a lot more good that could be done. A lot of times we find it easy to complain, easy to complain, but hard to pray. Prayer rubs up against our flesh. We don't, our flesh don't desire to pray. Uh, our flesh does not desire that, but this is a spiritual exercise. We have to ask the Lord to help us to be a prayerful people. Why should we pray for these? The Bible tells us, why should we pray for these leaders and these rulers who may not be good? You know, they may be leading in, in a terrible way, but the Bible says, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
these prayers help to give us a peaceful existence. Maybe some of the chaos that we're seeing in our country here is because we're not praying for our leaders. We are admonished to pray for those who are in leadership, even if we don't agree, even if they're wicked. So that why? So that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Our prayers have an effect on our nation, how we live, the peace of our nation. Imagine if uh, we as men of God did this. If we if, if we just put it in our hearts and our minds that man, we're gonna we're gonna take to prayer. We're gonna pray adamantly. We're gonna pray fervently for what's going on instead of complaining, instead of just listening to the talking heads and things like that. What if we said, man, we're gonna pray? Could it be that the chaos that's happening in our land is because of a lack of prayer and petitioning on the behalf of the authority? Uh, specifically by Christian men. We have been given this authority to pray and it leads to peace. Does it mean that there won't be anything bad that ever happens? No, but it leads to peace. This is the instruction of the Lord through the apostle Paul. For there is one God, this is first uh, Timothy chapter two, verse five through seven. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. The testimony given at the proper time for this, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. And he says, I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying as a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Then Paul tells Timothy, uh, Tim, first Timothy uh, two, eight. Therefore, I want men Every, in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Men to pray in every place, lifting up holy hands. So it's not just um, the prayers in itself, but it's the prayers of holy men, ones who are upright, ones who are seeking God. We have a spiritual responsibility as men of God to pray and to be ones who pray consistently. This is a direct encouragement to men specifically. We are not to delegate prayer or make it a thing that only women partake in. And for a long time, we have done that. As I said before, men are to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. We have to pray more than we complain. This episode of Culture Proof is brought to you by the Zan Tyler podcast, Thriving in Your Homeschool. Zan is an incredible author, speaker, and activist. She led the battle for homeschool freedom in South Carolina when, as a young mother, she was threatened with jail time for choosing to teach her own children at home. Each week, Zan sits down with guests to engage in relevant conversation. Recently, I joined Zan, and I can say firsthand that she has an intuitive way of drawing out what's important to the conversation. If you're homeschooling or thinking about homeschooling, you have to check out Zan's podcast. The Zan Tyler Podcast, Thriving in Your Homeschool, is available wherever you listen to podcasts. BJU Press Homeschool is the premier sponsor of the Culture Proof Podcast. Did you know that homeschoolers are a threat to a secular culture? It's true. For a society that envisions public education as the means by which it will indoctrinate future generations, destroy the proliferation of the gospel, and disintegrate the republic, homeschoolers are de facto revolutionaries. But all homeschooling is not created equal. What makes your kids' education Christian is not the fact that you are one. This is why we trust BJU Press Homeschool to help us seamlessly disciple our children, even in their core subjects. We don't want a secular education that uses Bible verses as frosting. We want the knowledge of God preserved at every phase of what our kids are taught. Consider BJU Press Homeschool for all of your homeschooling needs. We trust them to back us as we grow the resistance. You can too. Visit BJUPress.com today. That's BJUPress.com. Number one. A spiritually responsible man is a man of prayer. Number two, a spiritually responsible man, a man is a man that is all the way present. A spiritually responsible man is a man that's all the way present. 
We remember back in the garden, Genesis chapter three, verse one through seven, it says now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, as God said, you shall eat from any tree of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. <laughs> the serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and she gave also to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. So this first account of sin entering into the world, it had to do with the man not being present all the way. Because we get here that even though the, the, the serpent came and was talking to the woman, that the man was there with her. He wasn't present all the way. His job was to step in and say, hold on. This is not what God has told us. This is not what he has said to do. This is disobedience. We are not going to follow along with what this serpent is saying. But instead, we see him being pretty quiet and also partaking in eating this fruit. Are we present in our families as men? There are so many talking snakes and different things that come along to try to like infiltrate our families. But we as men, we serve as those buffers, as that boundary piece that will stop the enemy from coming in. But if we're not all the way present, he has easy access. Beyond our physical presence, are we checked in emotionally? Are we being the covering, the spiritual covering for our families? See, it's not enough that you say, well, I go and I, I, um, I make, uh, you know, I make the bacon, man. I come home, I bring home the bacon. No. What are we doing by way of discipleship in our home? What are we doing to help, uh, to cultivate and to love our wives, to build them up that they are growing in, 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 uh, the things of the Lord? What are we doing to make sure that our children are, are being trained in an upright way to, to, to live in the admonition of the Lord. Or we as men have this responsibility. In Genesis chapter 3, the serpent strikes up a conversation with the woman. A lot of times, the enemy will try to start right there with our wives, with the woman. Are we there to say, hold on, we're not going to give ear to what the enemy is saying, or we checked out and, and he has like full reign. The serpent question, the serpent's question, uh, the serpent questioned God's instructions, twisted what God has said, and also caused the woman to doubt. And the interesting thing is that while the whole conversation was happening, the man was right there, as I said before. This whole conversation is going on with this serpent. And the man is right there. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and she gave also to her husband with her. She gave also to her husband with her and he ate. Spiritually responsible men are checked in. They're all the way in. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. It's not uh, a good thing that they're just there present in body, but not engaged and active in the things that are happening in the home. 
We have to be engaged men. Spiritually responsible men are engaged. Number three, spiritually responsible men hand down the gospel to his family. If you read in the, in the scriptures, it's stated time and time again that the father was to instruct his children in the ways of the Lord. And I'm going to read a portion of Psalm chapter 78, but it's all throughout scripture. We know the scripture in Deuteronomy that discipleship is happening at, at all times of the day in the family context. And a lot of times we push over that responsibility to our wives, but the father is held responsible for the training up the discipleship of his children. Now, if you have a wife like my wife, who's a great teacher, who has a lot of different giftings, yes, that is supposed to happen. That teaching is supposed to go forth, but I'm ultimately responsible that it happens. You get me? I'm responsible as the man that this is happening. And I'm responsible to be engaged and to teach as well and to make sure that my wife is using her giftings and talents for the glory of God, first of all, in our homes or in our home. First of all, in our home. Psalm chapter 78, verse 5 through 8, it says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should teach them to their children, that the generation to come might know, even the children yet to be born, that they may arise and tell them to their children, that they should put their confidence in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandments and not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not prepare its heart and whose spirit was not faithful to God. We are held responsible for passing the faith down to our children. And I'm speaking to the spiritually uh, responsible men or the spiritual responsibility of men. Our wives definitely aid us in this work. God has put you and your wife together. If you have children, you guys work together to raise up the children in the ways of the Lord. So our, aid, our, our wives aid us in this work. But like we know, the man is responsible to get it done. The man is responsible to get it, get it done. A question for all men listening. Do you have a family mission? Do you have a family mission? Is there something that um, God has laid upon your heart that your family is, is supposed to be about for his kingdom? When we think of your family, when, when your family name is mentioned, is there a mission that's tied to that name? You know, God spoke to my heart just a few years ago about having a family mission. I got with God and I prayed, and Lord, what should our family mission be? And this is what he spoke to my heart. Addison family mission. Our family as a unit will use our talents, giftings, and abilities for the glory and honor of God. Everything that we have has come from the Father. Every gifting we possess is powered by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, whether it's speaking, preaching, sports, music, or any art form, it's all for the glory and honor of God and the advancement of the kingdom of God. In a couple of scriptures, it was 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So uh, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And then Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. And whatever I do, I personalized it. I will work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord, I will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom I serve. 
It's important, man, that you have a family mission. And if you pray, the Lord will show you based upon your family makeup, what the mission of your family is. And it's something that we have in a prominent place in our home, right over the kitchen table where everyone can see this is the family mission. This is our aim. This is what the Lord has, has impressed upon the Addison family. Do you have a family mission? I believe that spiritually responsible men pray for a family mission. You know, there's a lot of talk about submission and obedience and, you know, wives, submit to your husband. Come under, submit, come under a mission. But if you have no mission, what is she submitting to? It's on you, Father. It's on you, Dad, to have a mission, to get with the Lord and say, God, what is the mission for my family? What are we about? How do we bring glory to your name? Write it out, post it up so everyone can see. Everyone in the, in, the, in the family can see this is where we're going. This is what we're about. All right. Spiritually responsible men are available to train and help younger men. And this would be the last point. Spiritually responsible men are available to train and help younger men. The Bible says in Titus chapter two, verse six through eight, likewise, urge the young men to be sensible in all things, uh, to show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity in doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach, so that the opponent will be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. We have to be in a position, especially in the culture that we live in today, as older men to teach younger men. It's discipleship. And you have to first start in your home. I have four young men in my home, four sons. Ministry first starts at home. And so I have to have a heart as a spiritually responsible man to raise up my four boys in the way that they should go. They should see godliness. They should see dignity. They should see a life that's committed to following Christ. Spiritually responsible men pass this type of legacy on. Yes, it's good to have an inheritance for your children as monetary, financial inheritances, things like that. But a godly legacy, man, that's unshakable. That's something that we should uh, uh, look to present to all of our children, sons and daughters. And so spiritually responsible men, they know how to lead and to disciple younger men. Not only in the home, but we start there. But it has to carry on even to our local fellowships. It could be even in our uh, neighborhoods. How can, how, how can we, as spiritually responsible men, help other young men to see the light of Christ? How can we do that? Looking for ways to help those who, you know, may not know their right from their left. If God has saved you, he has saved you for a purpose, not so that you can just have your spot within the church and sit down. This is where I sit. No, he has saved you. He has filled you for purpose because he wants you to pass that on to others. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Discipleship. That's what this is. Life on life. Being able to have a Paul that's pouring into your life and a Timothy that, whose life you're pouring into. That should be the aim of spiritually responsible men. Who's pouring into me and who can I pour into? And so just to summarize or to go, go back, spiritually responsible men are number one, prayerful. We are men of prayer. Spiritually responsible men are all the way present. We are men who are engaged. Spiritually responsible men hand down the gospel to his family. 
The family should be the first stop for the gospel. If the first place that your children hear the gospel is at church, I would beg to say that you have failed. Praise God that they hear it there, but they should hear it in the home first. And spiritually responsible men are available to train and help younger men. With lives that are so busy as our lives are, are you available to train other men? First, the men that may be in your home, but also ones in your local fellowship or in your neighborhood. These are the marks of spiritually responsible men. These are the type of men that resist the cultural trends that rival the truth so that we can remain cultural. Until next time, Lord willing, God bless. <laughs>